What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into Rogue and Gambit issue number 4. In the last issues, what we had seen is that both Rogue and Gambit, they're having a little bit of trouble. Their communication just hasn't been what it was. The two of them have been struggling in their relationship. But the problem is, they can't focus on these issues. That is because we have had mutants that have been kidnapped. From Juggernaut to Manifold. From the Absorbing Man to Electro. All of these people that are mutants or may have powers, they are being kidnapped, devices are being put on their necks, and they are being mind controlled. And now Rogue finds herself trapped. And now we are about to learn exactly who has been behind all of this. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with a fight between Juggernaut and the Absorbing Man. This is three months ago. While the two of them have their duel, we have individuals that are watching from across the globe. This little gladiator match is being put on by the Power Broker. While the Ambassador from the UK is a little bit skeptical, this is because the Power Broker has failed on multiple occasions, never fully being able to come through with whatever it is they're trying to do. But he assures the Ambassador that this time, this time things are different, showing him truly what they are capable of. With a click of a button, we see Absorbing Man no longer having any ability to defend himself, as if all of his motor skills, his mind, were simply shut off. And so Juggernaut gives him one hell of a beatdown. The Power Broker is demonstrating exactly what he is doing, what he has created. He has created an opportunity for people to be able to use these mutants and people with powers as weapons, as mindless drones. That's what picks us up in present day, with Rogue trying to take one of these little devices off of one of the people captured. It led to an inevitable death, one that she did not expect. She didn't know that trying to take the device off would kill somebody. And Rogue, in a fit of rage, she goes directly for the power broker. But being tunnel vision, that is where Juggernaut is able to knock her for a loop. As she goes in to make her second attack, that is when Manifold teleports in from behind her, paralyzes her with a device. This drops her down to the ground and the power broker is able to put one of these mind control chips onto her neck. As it gets ready to activate, that is where the bombardment comes in. The cards are being thrown because Gambit has made his arrival. With Gambit throwing his cards, he is able to back everybody off of Rogue. Getting that device off of her back, she is able to break free. She is able to stand up. But when she stands up, she immediately goes after Gambit. Because she is no longer in control. While the power broker didn't finish the implant process, she can still talk to Gambit. But she no longer has control of her powers. And so as everybody leaves, he instructs Rogue, using the device to take out Gambit. And now, the two lovers are in a deadly brawl. Rogue letting it be known that if you remove the device, you will end up killing me, just like she accidentally killed Vanisher. And so, as Rogue makes her attacks, Gambit is playing defensively. He has no intention of hurting the woman he loves. While the two of them have this little brawl, they also have like a kind of therapy session. The two of them talking about the relationship, talking about how things have been bad, they've been sideways. At one point in time, Gambit used to look at Rogue like she was the only girl in the room. But lately, she's been feeling as if something is missing. Feeling as if Remy has just simply been keeping things from her. Like he literally died in Otherworld. And he has refused to talk about it. There is so much that the two of them have been struggling with. And as Gambit says that he trusts her and he does love her, she hits him with one hell of an uppercut. Knocking him down to the ground, she tells him that you gotta leave. But he would sooner die again than leave her side. This is where the power broker instructs her to start absorbing the powers of everybody in the room. Gaining the powers of Electro. She tells him that you gotta get out of here before he ends up dead. 
to go find the power broker to get the remote because she cannot hold back any longer. As we pick up with the power broker trying to make his escape on a helicopter, it lifts up into the air but the propellers, they get taken out by some playing cards. That helicopter falling down into a fiery crash. The power broker crawling out. Gambit demands the remote control. But the power broker says that even with the remote, you won't be able to save her. As long as that device is on her neck, there is nothing that Gambit can do about it. This is when there is a rumbling. And from the building, the wall breaks down. Absorbing the powers of Absorbing Man, of Electro, of Juggernaut. She comes crashing through that wall. And may God have mercy on anybody that is in her path. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So far, I have thoroughly enjoyed the Rogue and Gambit story. It really has been a lot of fun. The two of them have been having problems. The relationship isn't 100%. This is going to happen from time to time. No, long, no matter how long you've been together whether it be a year or 20 years, you're gonna come to a point where you just have problems. Communication is usually the number one problem in relationships, or I should say the failure of communication. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Rogue and Gambit haven't been able to properly communicate with one another, to properly express their feelings, their concerns, everything that is going on with them. Because of this, it has caused a drift between the two of them. But it does seem like this little fighting session that we can call a therapy session. Because while Rogue is beating the hell out of Gambit, they're also going through their problems. They're discussing their issues. My biggest issue with this stuff is that it seems like some of these writers forget that you can kill a mutant and simply resurrect them. So while yes, it would suck for Gambit to have to kill Rogue, when it is your last option, when Rogue is on the verge of killing you, absorbing the likes of Juggernaut, Absorbing Man, Electro, you have no other option but to take her down. We gotta remember, mutant kind has become immortal essentially. You know, I've seen people say, yeah, well, maybe he didn't kill her or won't kill her. Not for this comic, but just comics in general when it deals with the X-Men. This person didn't kill that person because it could have a psychological impact. But the truth is, they have cheated death. They have found a way around it. And when you run out of options, you have no other choice. You can simply go back and resurrect that person with all of their memories, bringing them back exactly as they were. The most logical solution is to kill that person and go resurrect them. While some writers are out here actively trying to avoid the resurrection thing, saying, oh, we can't do that because this person loves this person, there's no way that they would kill them. The truth is, you can just bring them back. You are immortal. Maybe this is a concept that mutant kind just fully hasn't grasped yet. While the younger mutants, on the other hand, they have been having fun with this. They are watching and letting people just blow their freaking brains out just to get a laugh. But then you have situations like this where they're like, oh no, I can't, I can't kill this person because I love them. Completely ignoring the fact that they can simply be resurrected. I don't know, I feel like it's just a, a big plot hole in a lot of X-Men stories that try to focus on the death of an individual being the worst thing possible. You know, maybe 10 years ago that would have played fantastic. But when you know resurrection is on the table, it just doesn't seem fitting. But with that aside, like I said, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm excited to see where this last issue, issue number five, is going to take us. I'm also curious on how someone like Juggernaut, who has been active in all the X-Men comics, somehow goes missing for three months and nobody seems to notice or even go looking for him. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this series, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with Rogue and Gambit. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. 
Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.